Let's rock. Time to do the robot dance. Lund rolls out fiberglass boats. Just wait, it's one painstakingly perfect and complex process. People are passionate about outdoor equipment. Get this, Americans spend more than $20 billion a year on gear. But no one ever really sees how their stuff gets made. Well, that's where we come in. Each week, we throw open the factory doors and give you a behind the scenes look at how your favorite gear is made. Made for the outdoors. The Lund Boat Legacy has been around since World War II. Now, not a lot of people know this, but some of Lund's very first boats were made out of fiberglass. Of course, the company made its name on aluminum boats. But guess who's back in the game? Lund is making fiberglass boats again. And I think it's easy to say these things have come a long way, especially when you see how they get made for the outdoors. Rock and roll, baby. Let's get on the water. Lund's original fiberglass boats were pretty fancy, touted as high-class, cushy, on-the-water rides. Now, the best anglers in the fishing business count on Lund fiberglass. Big, comfortable boats revered by those who want the very best. This is the uh, Brunswick Boat Group Teleco Lake Manufacturing Facility. Welcome to East Tennessee. Put hills of the Smoky Mountains, and this is the home of Lund Glass. 500 Tennessee employees work two shifts daily building fiberglass boats, a process of mixing glass strands with a sticky liquid resin. It's the DNA of every fiberglass boat. And it all starts long before sunrise with a guy named Leonard. And I'm guessing it's Leonard with sticky hands. Very. <laughs> Very sticky hands. Leonard White is Lund's resin technician. Every morning, 3.30 a.m. sharp, he tests every batch of liquid resin fresh off the delivery trucks. Resin is what bonds the fiberglass to the boat. The team needs to make sure the resin is exactly the right mix. We gotta make sure that it gets hard, kicks off at the right time, because the people have to have time to work, you know, roll the boats out and all that. With Leonard's stamp of approval, it's time to get to work. This is Mo, Mo Jackson. And that's his partner in crime, Cindy, and they do all the taping. These two hand tape all the patterns in the hull mold. These will eventually become the colors, the swirls, and the sparkle in the fiberglass hull. After you do it a time or two, it sort of just comes natural. What are you so stressed out about? I'm the one that's concerned with how straight the lines are. <laughs> because once they lay that pattern, it's set, right or wrong. And then workers wheel the mold into about the biggest paint booth around. Now it's time for the fun part, the clear coat and the painting, which goes on inside that box. And we're not allowed to take our cameras in. See the people? It's almost like the kid peeping through the fence. Through that little hole, we watch the Lund team start the haul process. First, they spray on a layer of resin, what will be the boat's hard outer clear coat. Mo takes one for the team and suits up to shoot a little video on the inside. Mo, you're doing a great job. 
After the clear coat, the painter sprays in the color. And then, the magic dust. Bling, I call it. The stuff that makes fiberglass boats so darn unique. The bling brings out the attention to the product. Lund's paint team goes through barrels of sparkle flakes. A few minutes of smooth sweeps back and forth, and suddenly the Lund boat is born. <laughs> but trust me, this is just the start. Coming up, the real fun starts. Fiberglass and resin. And let's just say things get sticky. That's what happens when you touch the resin, I'm stuck. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Nutrisource, Nordic Components, Banks Outdoors, and Suzuki Marine. Life on water comes with a bit of a reputation, especially when you think of fiberglass boats. To build a fiberglass boat, workers first tape the hull mold, spray in gel coat, and then get the paint on. Next, the big job, the art of fiberglass. If you're going to build a fiberglass boat, you need just that, fiberglass. And the name is just like it sounds. Tiny little fibers or strands of glass. Every Lund fiberglass boat gets a specific kind of sheet of fiberglass. Those sheets come from giant cutting machines. A computer controls the blades and snips out patterns specific to each model of boat. Workers stack the raw materials. Now, the art of sticky work starts. Yeah, there is art and there's a lot of science too because you're dealing with the chemical reaction. The fiberglass team spray resin into the painted mold and then add fiberglass. This process becomes a bit of a race against time. You see, rollers need to flatten the fiberglass and get any air bubbles out before that resin starts to harden. Seems easy enough, but a 20-foot boat has a pile of nooks and crannies to get just right. The resin's mixed with a catalyst that initiates the chemical reaction and then the liquid becomes solid. So throughout the process, you'll see liquid sprayed in the mold. It sets for an hour or so, becomes hard, and then you go on to the next layer of structure. That resin is sticky stuff. The job they're doing is A-OK. -okay. That's what happens when you touch the resin. I'm stuck. <laughs> Full skull dirty before you leave today. That's a really dirty job. They're putting the woven in the boat and they put raisin over the top of it. It's the glass. It makes the boat stronger. They won't let me do this job. They won't let me touch any of this stuff. Yeah, I'll try it. Finally, somebody's going to let me do something in here. How am I doing? You're just kind of pulling up to get the air yep. bubbles out? I don't know why that just looks like so much fun. Fiberglass team adds several layers. More fiberglass, more resin, until that hull sets and becomes Lund strong. While the fiberglass work continues, CNC machines over in the next room cut composite supports. These pieces go into the hull and the deck. Barely one hour after the team starts, the resin and fiberglass set up. With the hull now built, the plant's most recognizable guy gets to work. Maybe it's his reputation. I hear you've got a nickname. Yeah. Do I dare ask? Bugger. Bugger. Endearing because everyone says he hangs out a lot and it's kind of easy to pick on. Yeah. Don't screw this up. Bugger. He floats the boat, so to speak. First, he drills a series of holes in all the hull's empty pockets. Then he grabs the gun, expanding foam, 
fills all the hull's voids. That foam ensures this boat will always float. It takes seconds for that foam to expand and set up. You just tell me what I need to do. We will get this hull out. It's gonna be a hull of a job. Now, Booger becomes a wrestler. I made your hammer. I had to give up my hammer to Booger. Slowly, he taps in wedges. He pries and separates the hull from the mold. When the air seal finally releases, there it goes. Hey. The new hull comes loose. Like that, this lug boat starts to take shape. Good job. Your hand clean? Up next, the robots take control. And then we meet this guy, who tries to control them. So this is John's part of the building. And these are your buddies, your robots. Do they have names? They do, this is Jacob and Chase. And they don't talk back. No. John programs Lund's robots to trim that newly popped hull. Robots replaced humans for good reason. Two robots trim the entire boat in a matter of minutes vacuum system collects all the excess fiberglass dust. And with the hull now complete, it's time to make a boat sandwich. Up next, we get up close and personal with the gunk. Gunk, best name ever. With the Lund hull now out of its shell and the edges properly trimmed, Lund's riggers go to work installing all of the boat's, well, guts. All the plumbing and electrical, the live well tubing, wiring for the light, switches, the radio, everything now goes into both the hull and the deck. Right now we're getting everything prepped so we can set it down on top of the hull. Components must all be in place before the boat's two main parts become one. We take the deck and the hull and put them together. That takes a strong lift and lots of screws. And some called gunk. Hell, oh, a lot of gunk. Got about uh, five gallons of gunk. Gunk, best name ever. Think about the gunk as the heavy duty adhesive that will help lock the deck to the hull. The team double checks all the rigging. Because once it's together, they're not getting back in there. Once all the gunk goes into just the right spots, the team slowly lowers the deck. How's it looking, Larry? So far, so good. The team triple checks to make sure everything sits in just the right spot. Go ahead. We're good here. Workers now screw the deck to the hull. That, along with all that gunk, forms one permanent seal. Final step, waterproofing the seal. The boat is now one piece. Riggers install the bumper. First they drill, then screw, and repeat. I'll bet you anything you had no idea that that's how a fiberglass boat comes together. 10 minutes ago it was two parts, now it's one line. The boat now enters final stages of production, and the work transitions over to fabrication. It is easy. The area where workers build the remaining components. This is a lung bow cushion. It takes port and starboard, one of each. Joyce Hobson sews Lund boat seats. The majority uh, we do produce in-house. We cut our materials, you're spraying raw goods, you're sewing skins, covering upholstery. You're here more than you are at home, so it's more of a family than it is anything. I see these people want to see my own kids. Exactly why family becomes really the theme in this entire facility. Jimmy supervises the upholstery. He's worked here 31 years. 
A lot of good people here, just like family. With the cushions complete, the boat gets power, raw horsepower. Inside the boat, I'm installing the windshield walkthrough door. Adam Summit works on the main assembly. His team installs windshields, seats, all the interior components that complete the boat. With everything now complete, it's time for heavy lifting and a lot of wind chills. I'll try and explain next. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Central Boiler, Mountain Dew, Running Aces Casino and Racetrack, B&W Trailer Hitches, and by Game Fair. Workers at the Benor, Tennessee plant need about 10 days to complete a Lund boat. Start to finish. With the guts of the boat now in and the hull and deck now complete, the Lund team works on finishing up the details. I make sure the horn works. Ben Reynolds becomes the eyes behind all of Lund's work. Now just the anchor light, the water systems, make sure the engine is properly programmed. Ben checks everything. Every pump, every switch, every piece of the boat. The gauges are moving. So as far as I'm concerned, it's good. Which means the boat now goes for its first joyride even in the middle of January with temps at 18 degrees. See, the plant sits right on Tennessee's Teleco Lake. Right now, I'm just taking it off the uh, trailer. Dave Smudrick acts as Teleco's weight lifter. But right here, I'm just adding weight. <laughs> David piles weight into every new Lund boat he tests. Normally when I'm working by myself, I usually put 200 pounds on the uh, port passenger side. The bags of steel equal a full tank of gas, tons of fishing gear, and multiple riders. So you get paid to go for boat rides. Sounds like a dandy job. Point is, you quality control. You test all these boats. Usually it's just performance. And here in a little bit, you'll see what all I really check out in the middle of the lake. He may have about the best job in the plant. But I find one problem, brain freeze. At 50 miles an hour in January, David spends half an hour running this Lund through the ringer. He finds nothing wrong. This boat is ready. Yep. Time for bright lights and action. Inspecting the finish for the last time for the imperfections that we missed. James Blankenship walks the boat with a special light that highlights any, and I mean any, imperfections. Just a grease pencil that we mark the imperfections with. Thomas Clark follows with wax and a buffer. I'm fixing all the flaws that the inspector found. Scratches, mold marks. I go in behind him and fix what he finds. That's what I thrive on is seeing how good uh, the end of the product is. Boys, you're doing great, but I think you missed the spot. And only now does the boat earn this. James's autograph, the final okay. Now. It's complete. This boat will not sit on site very long. The shipping team covers the Lund and readies it to go out the door. Shippers load Lunds onto a semi, and like that, they go out the door, headed for owners who can now make memories on the water. 
the excitement is in the end product, right? It's something that you can really put your heart and soul into and get out, use it, enjoy it, and know that other folks are gonna enjoy it with their families. So that's how these boats come to be. Yes, fiberglass is a very complex process, but it leads to one of the prettiest, cushiest, and most functional boats on the water. It's built Lundstrong and made for the outdoors.